Good morning, my friends, and welcome to yoga. I'm Mary Ann, and for the next 30 minutes or so, we're going to be moving through a series of gentle yoga poses, both on the mat and a little bit of standing, designed to wake us up and gently move us into our day. So we start in what's called Sukhasana, easy pose. And we take our hands gently to our knees and turn our palms to the sky, closing our eyes, closing our mouth, and finding our breath. So we breathe exclusively through the nose in yoga, and we try to equalize the breath into equal parts in, equal parts out, and we give the exhalation a little bit of a so if we wander off physically or mentally we have something to come back to so first movement is going to be a seated cat let's roll our palms to our knees and slide our hands down to our ankles from the center of the chest let's lift the breastbone tilt the chin and roll the eyes to heaven this will allow the tailbone to lift. As we exhale, tuck the tailbone, drop the shoulders, sit down, chin to the chest. Allowing the movement to become fluid, we move one vertebra at a time, pairing it with the breath, and then exaggerating both, so that it's one breath, one movement. Let's do one more. This is a wake up call for our spine and hips. Now let's come back to neutral, sitting up a little taller, and the hands will slide back to the knees. Subtly we begin to shift our weight side to side. So my friends, this is very subtle. We're imprinting our glutes and our sit bones into our mat. Then very slowly, we start to move the pelvic area, that's the lower portion of the torso, into a circular clockwise direction. You'll notice here that not much else is moving independently. As we roll up the spine, we start to add on one vertebra at a time, and then we add the neck and head. This is called stirring the pot. So here we want to exaggerate, inhaling as we shift forward, exhaling as we tuck our tail under. Now the next time we're tucking everything under, we hold, and then slowly let's start to reverse. So we can either take it from the bottom and work our way up, or we can move right into our full range of motion. Your choice. All right, my friends, this time when we're shifting forward, let's pause and we'll come back to neutral. Let's go inside and find our right shoulder. There it is. Let's shrug it up toward our right ear and then we'll push it down toward our hip. Let's switch. So inhaling, we shrug. Exhaling, we push. Notice your head. It's still. Now let's shrug and roll, shrug, and roll. Let's be dramatic. Ah, now let's try both. So inhaling, we lift, exhaling, we push down. Ah, let's add the elbows. How does it feel now to increase the range of motion? And if it feels all right, let's do it again and reach for the sky. Big open heart here. All right, let's reach up and hold. So here, let's drop our shoulders down, lengthen through the fingertips. If this doesn't feel right, lower your arms a little bit. Bring them closer to shoulder height. Now, let's take our left hand to the mat and reach up and over with our right arm. So this is a lateral spine stretch. We're stretching the spine to the side. We're opening the side waist. Let's take it to swaying palm. So inhaling up, exhaling, we lean. Gentle openness of the torso, sideways, 
and our obliques. So, next time, the left arm's up. Let's bring the right arm up to join it. Bring our hands to Anjali Mudra. We call it prayer pose. Slowly swivel the ribs to the right, and then we'll push the fingertips into the earth. And from where the seat belt crosses over, let's twist to the right, then the ribs, chest, shoulders, neck, head, and eyes. Keep pushing the floor away through the fingertips and try to look all the way around behind you. Breathing, my friends. <sighs> all right, let's come back and face the camera. Let's take 10 fingertips behind us. We like to use the fingertips because they tell our brain where we are in time and space, more so than the palm. Inhaling, we lift the breastbone. Exhaling, let's hinge and come forward. And then we'll reach out in front, right and left. If it feels okay, put your palms down, lengthen, and maybe push the floor away as we lift the tailbone here. Draw the shoulders away from the ears and breathe into those hips. Very nice. Let's roll up, fingers behind us, let's rock back, feet to the mat, and then switch the cross of the legs. Let's do it again. Hands to the knees, shrug the left, and then push down, and then shrug the right. Notice if the movement is becoming more fluid. Well, let's shrug and roll. And if we can isolate a little more, if we can really drive that shoulder blade down toward the ribs, and both. <sighs> let's put a little more breath into it as we slowly begin to lift the elbows. And then as we lengthen the arms, let's really breathe across the center of the chest. All right, my friends, let's reach up and hold, stay. Now can we lift a little more and lengthen the fingers? Right hand to the mat, let's reach up and over. Now try to bring this left arm to the imaginary wall behind you. And then we'll go the other way. And then let's start to take it to one breath, one movement. Swaying palm. So we're swaying on a beautiful beach in a gentle breeze. All right, keeping that right arm up. Let's bring our hands up, finding that Anjali Mudra again, thumbs to the breastbone, and then we'll swivel to the left. Finding the corner of the room, fingers down, pushing, down and rising up, slow twist. So we liken this to wringing out a wet dishcloth. So we get all the water out of the cloth, we get all the tension out of the spine. Everything we don't need. We draw the navel in and up and we continue to wring it out by pulling the navel in toward the spine, up toward the back of the throat, and then releasing as we twist a little deeper. Beautiful, come back, facing forward, fingers behind us, inhaling, we lift, exhaling, we come forward, we reach left and right, drop the shoulders down, lengthen the neck, lift the tail and stay. <sighs> Feeling the length of the spine. All right, my friends, let's roll up, hands to the knees, taking our right ear to our right shoulder. So here we isolate the head, the neck, shoulders don't move, and we're sitting nice and tall. Good, head to center, chin to chest. Inhaling, head to center, exhaling, left to the left. Long breath in, head moves through center. We lift the chin high and take the bottom lip to the tip of the nose. Very deliberate. Getting rid of our double chin and releasing tension from the jaw. Head to center, left to left. Head to center, chin to chest. Head to center, right to right. Let's do it again. Come to center. We lift the chin high, bottom lift to the tip. Three to five. Feel that stretch. Good. Head to center. Circular clockwise direction, my friends. Ear to the shoulder, chin to the chest, ear to the shoulder. And we lift the chin high. 
exhaling as we tuck. So here we are, getting rid of tension in the neck, shoulders, taking our time, releasing what doesn't belong. Pausing the next time the chin moves, is moving toward the chest, and then we'll go the other way. With breath. All right, my friends, let's pause. Chin moving toward the chest. Level the chin. Let's take those fingers behind us again and we'll rock back, connecting the soles of the feet. Now here, if this position feels awkward and we want to slowly do this, we have some choices. So we could fold our mat and sit on it, taking the hips on a decline somewhat. You could also grab a pillow or a cushion. And then we want to sit up nice and tall hands on those ankles, and lift our knees to the sky. So this is wings of a butterfly. This is where we really start to get into the hips, the hip flexor, the inner thigh. Let's do two more. So inhaling, wings to the sky. Exhaling, wings to the earth. And then next inhalation, we sit up tall, and then we hinge. So like we did previously, we want to lift the tail. We want to draw the shoulders away from the ears. So we just hinge enough to get a little bit more of a stretch in here. A little bit more in the groin. Nice long neck. A lot of breath. All right, let's roll up. Let's come back to seated. Extend our legs in front of us. And let's give them a nice healthy shake. Let's come to all fours. So, coming to quadruped, all fours position, we want to make sure that our hands are under our shoulders and our knees are under our hips. Let's inhale and lift the tailbone. Shoulders draw away from the ears and we lift the chin. That's a cow. Exhaling, we tuck, round, roll, push the mat away. That's a cat. Let's do one more. Inhaling to cow. Notice how you're moving from the tail Exhaling to cat, holding the cat here like a Halloween cat, very pronounced arch. And then we'll move our hips toward the camera slightly till we feel a stretch across the lower back and then the opposite way. So here, we want to get into those hips. We want to release any tension in the lumbar spine. If we don't like being on all fours, we could roll up our mat under the hands and or under the knees. We could place bricks or books or blocks here. We could also make a fist if that's not uncomfortable on your knuckles because that extends the wrist, takes pressure off the wrist. But if we are here, we wanna keep lengthening those arms. All right, my friends. Now, inhaling, come back to center and sink the hips, shoulders draw back and down. We're going to try to come from cow up to a puppy and then up to standing. If you prefer, you can just stand up however you like. Curling our toes under, we lift our cow tail up and we do what's called puppy. So here again, we could put something under the hands. We could actually stay on all fours and do the cow or we could just stand up. If we've made it to puppy, let's push the heel closest to the camera into the mat. It does not have to connect. And then switch. And we're gonna walk the dog or walk our puppy. Feeling the length in the legs. Keep lifting your tail, keep driving down into your hands to push the mat away. Beautiful. Let's come up on all 10 toes again and bend our knees. Let's take a walk. Let's walk our puppy home. So walk our puppy in about halfway to the hands, push the heels low, and then slide the hands back to meet the feet. We do not have to touch the toes. Lengthening the legs, let's hang the head. Now the hands can stay here, or if you're here, that's fine. This is ragdoll. So let's shake our head, yes and no. Because a ragdoll has no agenda. 
He or she has nothing to do, nowhere to go. Just hanging out. All right. Softening the knees, my friends, or even bending them. Let's slowly roll up. Pushing your weight into your feet and rolling up to a standing position. Shoulders rolling up, back, and down. Let's take the hands behind us. Push the palms together and lace the fingers. If this is uncomfortable, try grabbing your elbows or even your wrists. We want to open the shoulders. We want to squeeze the buns. We want to open the heart to the sun. Gentle wake up stretch. Beautiful. Let's release. Release our arms and then reach for the sky. This is a deep breath in here. Let's take our left hand to our right wrist and then lean and open the side of the body in half moon. Lateral spine stretch, side waist opener. Feel the stretch down to the ankles. Go ahead, come back to center and we switch. Hand to the wrist, not gripping, just gentle. And we lean, ah, breathing into the space on the side of the body. Mm. Nice. All right, let's come back to center. We'll bring our hands to Anjali Mudra again, to prayer pose, thumbs to the breastbone, and let's bend our knees and sit in a chair. So, we wanna look down at our feet. They should be on parallel lines, right? About a fist distance of space for the ladies, right? Between our feet, two for the gentlemen. These are approximants because they mimic the distance between our shoulders. And on women, our hips and shoulders are probably about the same distance apart. The hip bones and the shoulders, that's where we want the feet. On the guys, their shoulders sometimes are a little broader, so they can have two. Just depends on what works for you. Let's lift just the right heel and sink into those quads. Now, if we needed support, we could hold on to a chair. If you saw my chair video previously recorded, we might have done this, but you could hold onto the back of a chair, push down low, and switch. And then we'll walk our dog here, noticing the hips are not moving. Right? They're nice and steady, isolating those thighs, those quads. All right, my friends, let's push down into the feet and then stand up. Ah, squeeze the buns, squeeze the shoulder blades, lift the chest. Apply a little pressure to the palms here. Take a breath, let it go. All right, we're gonna move into some hamstring stretches. So I'm gonna turn on my long edge. You can as well if you like, bend your knees. And then lift the heel that's closest to the camera off of the mat and step back maybe 12 inches. Try to stay on those parallel lines. Pushing down into the earth, rising up. Let's try bringing our kneecaps up into our thighs and hinge from the hip. So we don't need to go very far. If we have a chair, you can use it. This may also be in the chair video, but here we wanna work to square the hips. If we wanted to, we could take our hands to our hips, come forward, maybe even the hands to the thigh. We avoid pressure to the knee. We want to feel the backs of the legs open. Much like we did with the chair, this is unsupported. This is going to involve more of the abdominals. That's good. Good. So soft knees slowly rise, pushing into the feet, nothing going on in the back. Let's step in. Bend our knees. <sighs> Shoulders roll up, back and down. Lift the opposite heel. Find those quads. Step back. That 12 inches. Whatever feels right. Drive down, rise up. Let's come forward. Now, how does it feel on this side? Do we need to square our hips a little? Maybe unlock a joint. So there's a locked, there's an unlocked. 
Can we come a little further maybe? Nice. Push down into the earth, slowly rise. Step in. Good, now bend both knees again and see if we can lift those heels and get a little more space between our toes. We're gonna try some balance, my friends. So let's push down into our heels and rise up by lengthening the legs. Let's release the arms and bring them next to us. Turning your palms to the camera, squeeze your buns, squeeze your shoulder blades, and push your arms to the wall behind you. This is called flying angel. Let's lift our toes. So there they are. We found them. Let's lift them. <sighs> Placing them down one toe at a time. Let's rise into them. Woo. Squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze the back of the body, lift the chest, and then lift your wings behind you. This is flying angel. So we're flying high above the clouds. Gaze can be at the floor or up at the sky. We just want to avoid looking around the room as that's pretty distracting. Hmm. Woo. And then we lower. <laughs> Come on back to the mountain. Standing nice and tall, let's take a little sway. Forward and back, and side to side. Noticing the four corners of our feet. All right, my friends, we're gonna sit back down. So let's shake it out, and however we would like, let's have a seat. Let's come back to our cross-legged position again, right leg dominant. We're going to twist. So, left hand, right thigh. We avoid contact with the knee. Right hand behind. Now, if you've had any kind of recent abdominal surgery or you just don't feel comfortable crossing over here, left hand, left calf, or even forearm to the calf, we avoid the knee, right? Always avoiding the knee, we wanna keep it safe. Sitting up tall from where the seatbelt crosses, we start to twist. Similar to what we did earlier, except we change the dynamic of it by crossing over. Or even if we're here, we can still apply a little pressure and get a little deeper into that twist. Good, let's come back and face forward. Let's extend that right leg and pull the left foot to the groin for a bit of a hamstring stretch. Sitting up nice and tall, shoulders up back and down, Start with the hand on the thigh, lengthening the leg and the spine. Let's take a walk. Now, do we want a little? Do we want a little more? Wherever your body wants to go. This is called nose to knee pose. Not because we have to connect it, but if we were to connect, the nose would be about at just below the knee instead of back here somewhere. Feel that hamstring stretch. We're trying to get into the backs of those legs. Really release. Beautiful. Let's sit up and we'll switch. So let's extend the left leg. Right foot to the groin. Inhaling, we sit up. Shoulders up, back and down. Nice long neck. Take the walk. Now, can we lift the tailbone a little more? Can we find more length in the spine? more length in the neck. Can we curl the toes back? Ah. All right, come on up and then we'll cross. Left leg in front. This is called owl or just a seated cross-legged twist because we make like an owl. We rise up, we twist from the base we have the crossover if we like, or our optional variation, and then we slowly twist. 
finding that navel, my friends, drawing it in and up. All right, come on back. Beautiful. Fingers behind us. Let's extend our legs and give them a healthy, healthy shake. And we're going to lie down. So bending our knees, let's glide our glutes forward, looking behind, making sure we have the space we need, and then we'll lie down. Nice. Now, final pose, final active pose. Take the feet as wide as your mat. Let your knees fall together. What this will do is it will release the lower back just in case we drew any stress into it. We don't want to do that. Arms at the sides. Now if your body is asking for another position, yoga encourages us to go there. We want to start to center the head and then draw our awareness back inside. Noticing how we feel in this moment physically and mentally. Sending the breath to any area of the body that's either unopened or maybe overexposed. Hopefully neither. But we want to clear all those areas, balance them, And then when you're ready, we'll gently heel toe the feet in and extend the legs. Heels in, toes out. Maneuvering the body. This is called Shavasana, corpse pose. Not because we want to be one, but because we want to make like a corpse. And a corpse assumes nothing. So here, my friends, we go back into the breath, surrendering the weight of the body to the earth, the weight of the mind to the universe. And just for now, we assume nothing. But if we are ready to return, we begin to wiggle the fingers and toes, roll the ankles and wrists, tense and release any and other parts of the body. And then we'll give a bend to the back knee, the knee furthest from the camera, and we'll roll over into a fetal position. Pushing the earth away, let's help ourselves back up, finding our way back to where we began. So we've come full circle. Hands to Anjali Mudra, prayer pose, thumbs to the heart. Drawing in one more breath, my friends, let's hold it inside the body, connecting to the beating of the heart and the chest, perhaps setting an intention, large or small, for this day. As we exhale, we gently bow the head. And in closing, yoga invites us to join together in saying silently or aloud, Shanti, three times. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Meaning peace. Have a peaceful day. Namaste. And on behalf of myself, I'm Mary Ann, and all of us here at Newcastle County, we wish you a happy, healthy day, and we'll see you all next time.